Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Modern Warfare 3 In-Depth Scar L. In today's episode, you're going to get to see a lot of stealth gameplay, because this is probably my favorite stealth weapon in Modern Warfare 3. You're also going to get to see me unlock the gold camo about halfway in, but I'm not going to put the gold camo on the gun, because I find it to be a little bit distracting. And for those of you that stick around to the very end of the video, you're going to get to see a clip or two from If It Were Realistic Juggernaut, which I've been up filming since 6 in the morning. Man, it's been a long day, but let's jump right into the stats of the Scar L. The SCAR-L is a very, very low damage weapon. It only deals 35 to 20 damage over range, which means it actually is on par with the FAD. The FAD is not quite as strong up front, but the FAD actually has more damage at range. So be aware when dealing with the SCAR-L that it is a low damage weapon. What this is going to mean for you in all practical terms is it's going to take between 3 and 5 shots to kill, depending on how far away you are. And most importantly, you should note that it's going to take between 2 and 4 headshots to kill, with that 2 shot kill range being very, very close to the target. So I would recommend that you do not go for headshots with this weapon. Aim for the upper body and neck. You might get lucky and get a headshot, but don't go for the headshots expressly because they're really not worth your time. The SCAR shoots at 750 RPM, which is average amongst the assault rifle class. Nothing too special about this, but when you mix that with all the other damage and range statistics, you'll find that it has a very average time to kill. It does slightly better than average in close range and slightly worse than average in long range, so the time to kill turns out to be pretty normal for this weapon. The SCAR does have a pretty good damage profile. The damage drop doesn't start until 30 meters, and it ends at 46 meters, so you have a pretty narrow band of drop that doesn't start until pretty far out there. The AK-47, I believe, is tied with the SCAR-H for damage drop range. Of note, this weapon has absolutely beautiful recoil. I'm going to class this as a low recoil gun. It's not very low, because in Modern Warfare 2, it was a very low recoil gun. They made it kick a little bit more here in Modern Warfare 3. You'll notice that when you fire it, it's going to drift very slightly upward, and it's going to wobble side to side a little bit, but it's not going to drift to one side or the other. So the recoil here is very easy to master, very easy to perfect, and very easy to get a good feel for. When you combine this with the weapon's beautiful iron sights, you have no need for any sort of optical attachment, which frees you up for a silencer, extended mags, or pretty much anything else. Because optical attachments aren't really needed. The iron sights are very clear, it's circular, the uh, bar in the middle lets you know exactly where your target is, what you're shooting at, what the dot would be. Very, very easy to use. The reload time is also pretty normal here. Depending on if you have bullets in the magazine or not, it's going to take about two and a half seconds to reload. Your reload cancel time is 1.1 seconds, so it's always worth the time to reload cancel, especially if you have sleight of hand. You can do it very, very quickly. Your three big statistics that all assault rifles share are the same here again, with a run speed of 90% time, an aim down sight time of 300 milliseconds, and an aim down sight zoom, at least on the iron sights, of 1.35x. Like all the other weapons in Modern Warfare 3, there are many different ways to use the SCAR-L. However, I feel this weapon is best suited for something of an ultimate stealth class, or this is my favorite weapon to use if I want to go 100% stealth. I would recommend attaching a silencer to it because you don't need any sort of dot sight or optical attachment because the iron sights are beautiful. The silencer is only going to help mitigate muzzle flash and make it feel even more accurate. Put kick on there because that's going to help you use it at long ranges a little bit better. It works great at close range, but for those long range engagements where you have to shoot somebody five times, you're really going to want to kick to make sure that all of your bullets hit. Use Assassin to stay off the radar, completely off the radar. Don't have people hunting you down. You want to stay outside of the combat. I get a frog in my throat. I'm a little sick here. <coughs> outside of the main combat area and start off playing stealthy like you've probably seen me do in this video and work your way up the kill streaks with specialist. Once you get all of the specialist proficiencies and perks on this weapon, you have a very, very dangerous stealth weapon. I don't think that there's a better stealth weapon in all of Modern Warfare 3. Well, that's all for this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something useful. In the next episode, we're going to be going over the ACR 6.8. That's if I don't get around to doing that impact testing. And for those of you that stuck around to the very end of this video, you're going to get to see what I did today, what we started at 6 in the morning filming. If it were realistic juggernaut, not the Modern Warfare 3 juggernaut, but the COD 4 juggernaut. I'm going to show you some raw, unprocessed, uncolor corrected, no special effects, kind of behind the scenes stuff here. Hope you enjoy it. Drifter out. So, uh, if it were realistic juggernaut, we used so much blood, the, uh, the script didn't even make it here. We're kind of going, uh, making shit up at the end. This is the script for, for realistic juggernaut. It fucking bleeds. <laughs> Yeah. Are you together? Are you together? Are you together? Awesome.
Right arms all that. Then just move your hips and kick start. Best you can. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. like a thousand people show up. <laughs>